World's Worst Teachers by David Williams Miss Seed's Detention Rampage Some teachers are permanently annoyed. Others are always cross. There are even some who spend their whole day fuming. However, Miss Seed was never not furious. There was a very good reason for this, and for once it wasn't the fault of the children. At Ryle High School, Miss Seath had been the deputy head for as long as anyone could remember. For years and years, she'd been living in the shadow of someone. Someone who had the top job. Someone who would never retire. Someone who'd been headmistress for nearly 50 years. Five decades. Half a century. It was unheard of to be in the job for so long. At some schools... A head teacher might only last five minutes. For example, Hell's Bell School for Horrible Boys. More of that infamous school later in the book. As our tale begins, the 99-year-old Miss Stint was just days away from celebrating her golden anniversary as headmistress of Ryle High. This made Seath seethe. As deputy head, she was just under Miss Stint. Any deputy head dreams of one day becoming the head teacher. Number one, top dog, the big cheese, numero uno, our glorious leader. But not for nearly 50 years. That is how long Miss Seath had been waiting to seize the crown. Waiting and waiting. Then waiting some more. Every day she cursed the ground Miss Stint rolled on. One day, she would incant to herself as she looked around the school. One day, this will be mine. Mine, mine, mine. The fury was written all over her face. Over time, her eyes had narrowed to become two inky black dots. Her mouth had curled into a permanent grimace. Her ears had begun to glow as red as the fires of hell. Her forehead had become as lined as an exercise book. And her nostrils had flared so much you could stuff a sausage roll up each one. Do not attempt this. It would only make Miss Seath even more furious and she is already really, really, really furious. Miss C's face was permanently frozen in fury. She woke up in the morning like that, and she went to bed at night like that. Even when she was expecting something pleasurable, like sucking one of her favourite boiled sweets, humbugs of course, she looked as though she was sucking on a wasp. Miss Seath had been waiting for so long that she had grown very, very old. Not as old as Miss Stint. No one was as old as Miss Stint. The deputy head was 88 and walked with a stick. The advantage of this was that it doubled up as a weapon. It was perfect for prodding and poking children. Prod. Ouch! Poke. Ah! Proke. Ugh! When she was particularly enraged, she would swing the stick over her head like a propeller. (laughs) Most days... Miss Seath stalked the corridors of Ryle High, looking for anyone on whom she could vent her fury. Her favourite thing in the world was to give out detentions. A detention is a punishment where you have to stay behind after school. It might be an hour, or two hours, or even more. I was so badly behaved as a child that I am still in detention and I left school in 1989. Absolutely anything you did could get you into trouble with her. Miss Seath was known to dish out detentions for the most spurious of reasons. Sneezing in class. That sneeze was so loud it could have made me deaf, child. Detention! She would yell as she whacked her stick down on the cowering child's desk. Thwack! Having a spot on the end of your nose. That spot is an eyesore. You have ruined the appearance of the entire school. Detention! She'd spit, prodding the child's nose with her stick. Ouch! Humming while sitting on the toilet. Seath would strike the cubicle door with her stick. Thwack! Before shouting, You shall poo in peace! Detention! Having your birthday on a school day. Happy birthday, child. Oh, thank you so much, Miss Seath. Not at all, and I have a present for you. Oh, wow, thank you. My present for you is... A detention! Oh, I should have known. Double detention. Wearing a squeaky trainer on sports day. Squeak, squeak, squeak. 
that one squeaky shoe is confiscated. But miss, then I'll have to run the race wearing only one shoe. Perfect. You can limp all the way to your detention. Having an egg sandwich in your lunchbox. You have stunk out the entire school, the entire town, the entire country, the entire continent, the entire planet, the entire solar system, the entire universe. I'm not sure they can smell my egg sandwich on Mars, miss. Detention! Walking too fast in the corridor. Slow down, you reckless blunderer, she would say as she blocked their path with her stick, slamming it down in front of them. Whoosh, thunk. But miss, please, I'm late for my exam. You will miss it as you will be in detention. Walking too slowly on the corridor. Speed up, you slovenly clod, as she poked them in the back with her stick. Poke. Ow! But miss, I've broken my leg. A pathetic excuse. Detention. Carrying an offensive banana. That banana could easily have an eye out. Detention. Even having what Miss Seath considered to be a stupid name. Yes, Mark does count as a stupid name. I have never heard of one stupider. But Miss, I can't help it. That's the name my mum and dad gave me. Double detention. Miss, triple detention. I won't say another thing. Quadruple detention. That's not fair. Quintuple detention. I think it's quintuple, Miss. Quintuple detention. And for correcting me, you now have sextuple detention. Offenders would all have to stay in school, in Miss Seath's classroom for an hour or two or three, or sometimes even until dawn. It depended on whether you got her on a bad day or a very, very, very bad day. As a punishment, Seath would set out lines, which the wrongdoers would have to write out hundreds or thousands of times. I am sorry for blinking. It will never happen again. I must blow my nose more quietly in future. I am very sorry I have one ear slightly larger than the other. I deeply regret the stinking of cheese and onion crisps. I will not drop a biscuit crumb on the dining hall floor ever again. I must not ever, ever, ever smile on school premises. I come to school to be miserable. I sincerely apologise for being ginger. I will not do it again. I am deeply ashamed I was one second late for school. I will never again sing the school hymn slightly out of tune. I promise to comb my hair in the opposite direction in future. However, on one particular afternoon, Miss Seath was not able to give one measly detention. That is because... A grand tea party was to be held in the school hall, and every single pupil was invited. All 1,000 of them. Of course, all the teachers, dinner ladies, and caretakers were there too. The party was in honour of Miss Stint and her 50 glorious years as headmistress of Ryle High. Unlike Miss Seath, who was hated, Miss Stint was loved by everyone. She was like everybody's favourite grandmother, or great-grandmother or great-great-grandmother. Miss Stint was a lovely old dear, and the whole school wanted the party to be really special. Everyone had brought in something. There were cakes and jellies and pies and sandwiches galore. As you might expect from a tea party, there were cups of tea galore too. The only problem was, there was no Miss Stint. The headmistress was late for her own party. Extremely late. Miss Stint had all the urgency of a tortoise. The 99-year-old was woken up in her office. She generally slept there most of the day. By her most trusted ally, the school secretary. Miss Epoch was a mere slip of a girl at just 98. The elderly secretary trundled her boss down the long corridors in her wheelchair, stopping off at the toilet 17 times on the way. When Miss Stin finally entered the hall, it was getting late, and the old dear had nodded off again. <laughs> However, as soon as she rolled into the room, she was met with a loud chorus of Hooray! and she woke up again. Miss Epoch then steered the headmistress onto the stage for her to make her golden jubilee speech. I'd name this ship, began Miss Stint in her sing-song voice. No, no, hissed the secretary. I do declare this library open 
no, no, no. I thank you all for coming to celebrate my bronze. No. Silver? No. Golden? Yes. My golden jubilee as headmistress of the school. Teachers, pupils, dinner ladies, caretaker, gardener, and everyone else present who I have not the faintest idea of who you are. Welcome. Everyone cheered. Hurrah! Everyone, except Miss Seath, of course. The deputy head was loitering behind a trifle and slowly turning purple with rage. Believe it or not, continued Miss Stint, I am now ninety-nine years old, nearly halfway through my life. Halfway, barked Seath, and I have been reflecting upon things as you might at such a remarkable landmark moment. Oh, get on with it, snarled the deputy, stamping her walking stick on the floor. Thud. Should I continue as headmistress of Ryle High? Miss Seath's ear pricked up. Or is it time for me to move on to pastures new? Well, I feel today is the perfect day to make the announcement. The deputy head began to do something she hadn't done in a very, very, very long time. Smile. Her furious face became, well, happy. This was the moment for which Miss Seath had waited for the best part of half a century. The headmistress was about to announce her retirement, and as deputy head, the crown would be passed to her. Finally, she would be top dog at Ryle High. But before Miss Stint could make the announcement, the old dear had nodded off mid-sentence. <laughs> her secretary, or rather nurse, Miss Epoch, stepped in. She woke Miss Stint up, as she always did, by gently slapping her boss around the face. <laughs> Miss Stint woke up with a start. Oh, thank you so much, Miss Epoch. I don't know what I'd do without you. My great pleasure, my headmistress, replied the secretary. Now, where was I? The announcement, bellowed Miss Seath. Oh, yes, thank you, Miss Seath, my trusted deputy and closest friend. Seath nodded her head, but said nothing. All she'd ever felt towards Miss Stint was a deep, dark resentment. Today is the perfect day to make the announcement that... Dum, dum, dum. There wasn't really a dum-dum-dum sound. I just added it to ramp up the tension. This I have done at no extra cost to you, dear reader. I have decided to stay on as headmistress of Ryle High for another 50 years. Hooray! Everyone cheered. Miss Stint was much loved, but there was a hint of uncertainty in the cheer. Fifty years? Was she really going to live until she was 149 and still be working? Miss Seath looked as though she were about to explode. No! she screamed. Did you have anything to add, Miss Seath? inquired Miss Stint. Detention! The whole school laughed uproariously. <laughs> Chortled Miss Stint. I am the head mistress, Miss Seath. You can't put me into detention. Insolence! shouted the deputy head. She was having none of it. Double detention! <laughs> Triple detention! The school secretary spoke up for her boss. Miss Seath, please, have you lost your marbles? Yes, I have, many years ago, shouted Miss Seath, waving her walking stick over her head faster and faster. <laughs> that wasn't the answer Miss Epoch was expecting, but she pressed forward anyway. Even so, this is Miss Stint's big day, fifty glorious years, how dare you ruin it? Miss Seath was a lady not for turning. Detention, she boomed again. I beg your pardon? replied the secretary. She couldn't believe her ears. Now she was receiving a detention too. Double detention, bellowed Miss Seath, but triple detention, but quadruple detention, but quintuple, I mean, quintuple detention, but what? Sextuple detention, but septuple detention. How many is that? Seven, octuple, 
is that eight. Detention! Yes. Non opal detention. Nine. I bet you don't know what ten is. Decoupal detention! Knickers! exclaimed the secretary. Miss C, you've gone quite crazy in the coconut. You can't just give detention to anyone. Oh, yes, I can, thundered the deputy head. Oh, no, you can't, chimed in the entire school. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. This pantomime routine went on for a few hours before Seed snapped. Everyone in this room, you are all in detention. This was a detention rampage. Everybody in the school hall, and it was well over a thousand people, began complaining loudly. Not least of all, the other teachers. Nope, never, nope, nonsense. Nicky nacky noo noos. That was Miss Epoch again. Merry Christmas, everybody, announced Miss Stint over the din. It's January, headmistress, corrected the secretary. Is it really? Yes. Well, it's nice to get in early. Before anyone could utter another word, Miss Seath shouted, Silence! Louder than any teacher had ever shouted silence before. The previous record for loudest shout of silence was held by a stocky geography teacher named Mr. Boom. He shouted so loudly that he made himself go permanently deaf. These days, because he can't hear a thing, he shouts even louder. Now, she had everyone's attention. Seath started spinning her walking stick above her head faster and faster and faster. <laughs> and shooing everyone out of the hall. Shoo! 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 In no time, she had forced every single pupil and staff member down the corridor, up the stairs, and into her classroom at the top of the school building. The problem was the classroom was meant for 30, not 1,030. It was like standing in a packed train carriage at rush hour. Armpits were in faces, knees were knocking against each other, and toes were treading on toes, Oops, ouch, sorry. All the children found this to be most amusing. No one let go or we are all doomed, shouted someone. <laughs> you can all stay back until the end of time, shouted Seath from the doorway. You sad little woman, mocked Miss Epoch, speaking up for the entire school. This is all just because you didn't get the top job. Boo hoo hoo. And now you will never be my headmistress and never get your moment of glory. Yes, agreed everybody else. Miss Seed's narrow eyes narrowed even further. Her nose wrinkled and her lips quivered. You are quite wrong, announced the deputy. This is my moment of glory. And for this is the day when I give the entire school a detention. Not the entire school observed Miss Stint with a smile. What? I think you're forgetting someone. Who? demanded Seath. You! Silence descended over the overcrowded classroom. All eyes turned to the deputy head, who was standing at the door, wrestling with this thought. After a few moments, she spoke. Miss Seath? announced Miss Seath. Yes, Miss Seath, replied Miss Seath. I hereby give you a detention. Me? Yes, you. But I am the deputy head of a school. You can't give me a detention. Oh, yes, I can. For I am the deputy head of the school. Now get in there. Shoo, shoo, shoo. And with that, Miss Seath held up her stick and prodded and poked herself into the classroom. Now there was even less room in there than before, and people started to grumble. Can't you wait until the next train? Stop picking my nose. I'm terribly sorry. I thought it was mine. Miss Seath closed the classroom door behind her. Shtum! Right. Now everyone settle down, she called out. You try and settle down in here, called back Miss Stint. There are thirty bottoms for every chair. <laughs> Some of those bottoms are too large for just one. <laughs> right, announced Seath, determined to gain control of the classroom. She clambered up Miss Stint as if the elderly headmistress were a ladder. Would you mind awfully removing your foot from my head? asked the headmistress. 
holding on to her stick tightly, Miss C then crowd-surfed her way over the top of everyone's head. I am setting us all lines, she announced as the wave of hands passed her around the room like a beach ball. I must not complain about being given a detention, or I will be given another detention. No one could write a thing. There wasn't room to move your elbow. We can't. It's impossible. Are you bananas? <laughs> Undeterred, Miss Seath crowd surfed her way over to the cabinet in the corner to fetch some paper. She stood on top of it and addressed the entire school. I want you all, I mean us all, to write it out a million times, she barked. I'm not doing it, Seath replied to herself. A billion then, she snapped back, rotating her walking stick over her head. I said no, a trillion, woof. no, a zillion, woof. never, a gazillion, woof. no, no, no. As she argued with herself, her walking stick revolved faster and faster and faster and faster still. <laughs> Seath was now spinning her stick above her head with such speed that she actually took off like a helicopter. <laughs> her feet left the cabinet and she sent herself crashing through the roof of her classroom. Smash! The teacher hurtled through the sky. Everyone looked up through the seed-sized hole in the ceiling to see her whizzing through the clouds, still rotating her stick above her head. Detention! bellowed Miss Seath at a pigeon that flew past her. Her voice echoed across the sky until it was heard no more. Well, that feels better, sighed Miss Epoch. Oh yes, murmured everyone else in agreement. Now let's Party! announced Miss Stint. Yes! cried the entire school. They all tumbled out of the classroom and followed the headmistress down the corridor, back into the hall where all the yummy cakes and jellies and pies were still waiting for them. Hooray! Miss Stint was the last to leave the party, way past midnight. The events of the day had perked her up no end. There was karaoke, and she treated the school to a performance of her favourite hip-hop tracks. MC stint on the mic, rile high. Let me hear you say where yo. As for Miss Seath, no one knew where she landed, if indeed she ever did. So if you find an angry old lady lying in a ditch, waggling a walking stick above her head and barking detention at you, approach with extreme caution. Whatever you do, don't stick a stamp on Miss Seath's forehead and post her to rile high. They do not want their deputy head back, ever.